I can assure him and also assure President HH, you are not going to stop his relatives and friends to stand with him, to protect him when his life is threatened. And protecting him in this case is to stand with him. Those who were there are basically people who believe that he is uh, being victimized and it's unnecessary and they would want to uh, see uh, all these machinations and attempts on his life, you know, to the very end, including offering their bodies for his protection. That you can stop. The only advice I give to President HH at personal level, as somebody that is related to me and this president, is that, uh, Mr. President, don't allow overzealous cadres and officers around you to push you into antagonizing the office of the former president. That is basically courting, you know, anarchy. It's not necessary. You can draw lessons from Ruto. You can draw lessons from other former presidents who are secure in their office and they respect their predecessors. You can do the same. What is eating you up is insecurity. And where is the insecurity coming from? Possibly it's your underperformance. Where should your energy go to deal with the, your underperformance, areas to which the Zambian people are complaining and are comparing you and your performance to that of the former president? And clearly, the distinction is very clear that you have underperformed and President Lungu is by far ahead of you. Work hard and catch up. Work, let your work speak for you. You will be sleeping peacefully. You will not be seeing me, President Edgar Lungu in your dreams. The reason you are always dreaming about him and waking up with Edgar in your mouth is because you have disastrously performed as president. Cure that, you will sleep peacefully. Cure that, you will not worry about anything, not even 2026. But so far, I can tell you that uh, you are almost out of that seat if this performance is going to continue up to the time that they're going to the poll. The Zambian people are already resolved. Out there, they are already saying, Mwene kakoyenda. So, Mudana, Mutapenga vaidiga. Amu penge agure rajisi. Amu johe muro wa wabusu. Mujose muro wa mungwimba. Mujose muro, mujohe muro wa nini? Wa fertilizer. Mujose muro wa transport. Mwe abona mwena Zambia ndi zangabamu. Kama mwitadu usegutika na ajo kere. But mbumu berega. Mbumu wa lera jisi usile jino jini. And the way of victimized people on tribal lines, ethnic consideration, the cleansing that has been taking place in government, you have only infiltrated, infuriated the Zambian people. Mwabanyi mnyamudara. And it doesn't matter how much rhetoric and ranting, including the use of force. And I can tell you, a leader um, governs and is at peace when they use moral authority, not force. Moral authority is more powerful than force. Because when you try and squeeze the citizens, there's an African saying that even a sheep or goat, when you squeeze it and it has no option and area to run to, it can also bite. Don't squeeze the Zambian people to a point where they begin to think the only option is to bite. That African saying is potent for every leader to always acknowledge. How do you gain more authority? More authority is gained by integrity, meaning what you, you mean what you say and say what you mean. More authority also means that you gain it by acknowledging when you are, are wrong. Then people begin to respect you. They begin to trust that you mean well. But if you are boastful, blame game, and always finding faults in others other than yourself, soon people will just say you are hollow and you don't deserve their respect. Mm. Does the former president have uh, plans of, of returning into active politics? Well, that has never been an issue that has been discussed anywhere, either by himself or anybody. It has been a narrative advanced by the UPND. The UPND 
like I've said, maybe out of realization that they have not been able to uh, score, not even one goal. They have been scoring their own goals. Uh, I remember some debate in Ghana about uh, Maguire. I think outside the Ghana and Maguire will also have Zambian Maguire. Aka in the HRM has been a fantastic Maguire scoring his own goals instead of scoring for development. And because of that, the UPND members are worried. That's, look at the proud, the way he's uh, talking. This Monsanje, Pa Monsanje Abandiba here. Or what good an energy in Yanjo, Mutonga to Sogum Monsikono. Ne, Mumoga Gorita in Congo, Jagatana. Tame of Maraguri Banda, the more position of tea. So, Jigore, Mamba and Congo, who come and sort out, we have connections. No Jarabuti. As we had solutions, we knew what we needed to do after achieving this level of uh, development. We knew how we're going to utilize facilities like the international. Um, airport on the Copper Belt, the Simon, Simon Monsaka Pueblo Airport. We knew how we're going to utilize the Kenneth County International Airport, the new facility, just like uh, the Arimangan Kumba. These were strategically built because we had some economic activities that we needed through certain concepts to implement. They are even reflected in our manifesto. But you have brought novice who are good at fantastic rhetorics of the rhetoric of promises and would win the Zambian people into voting them into government and now they are stuck. If they don't sit down and reflect, I can tell you, 2026, they are packing. Let me take a, a last last set of calls. Uh, unfortunately, we lost up. And please call us back on 0955-221515 if you would like to uh, participate uh, in our conversation today. Now, uh, as we wait for that, uh, it's interesting also to note that uh, actually you are related to the head of state, right? Am well, I right? We come from the same place, yes. So you are related? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Anyway, it's the same community. Wengwa, Momba, my grandmother and the, the grandies in Wengwa come from the same area. Why, why have you disrespected him some? For, for some time now. I don't know what you mean, disrespected. For example, you called him names. I think you're in a court case now about, uh, you know, uh, not having had uh, good language on him. Which, uh, which I don't one? know. You've called him a liar. You, you've just called him names. Like like one would not think you, you are that close. I mean, I, culturally. I don't know what you are trying to imply. Misaka in the HLM, is the president of the Republic of Zambia. Mm. He was not, uh, you know, campaigning to be elected to become my elder brother. Of course not. He campaigned to become the president of the Republic of Zambia. And he offered himself for that office so that he can save the Zambian people. And his young brother happens to also be a politician who is in opposition. And who can and declare interest in certain comments? Declare interest in terms of what? Like you can probably can't call him a uh, uh, liar. So if the president lies and the, I'm called upon to describe what I say, I should declare interest and say, okay, I declare interest to call him what he, yeah. or to call out what he has done. Is that what you I just about? think that I don't agree with what you have said. It's better approach to, as, as to saying you're a liar, I think. Okay. How do I say it? The president came from the UK from coronation. He comes and says there are 13 police officers when they are seven. He even turns and says, Wakangwa, Tefio, if Tefio Chiri, President Arebe Epa. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. To feel understand, I should declare interest at how, though they were, they are seven. I think those numbers were not correct. Those, sir. Uh, what's the difference? Basically, you are basically trying you're, to. You're, say, you're just correcting the, the, the figures that he could have missed. That's not, the, the issue is that if it was a mistake, you can correct it. But if somebody is deliberately telling a lie, it's a lie. You understand? Mistakes are ones that you commit once. Then later on, if you discover that uh, I made a mistake, you correct. But you can't perpetually be telling lies and expect people to just say, no, uh, I think the, the number was not the correct number. What are you saying? So since you come from the same area, from the same community, how do you relate 
do you, do you at some point find yourselves in the same village? Well, we are yet to, from the time he became president, we are yet to find ourselves. I think when he is in the village, I'm in Osaka. When I'm in the village, he's in Osaka. Uh, now that uh, his daughter is getting married, I'm trying to see whether my little animals uh, I'm keeping somewhere, we can donate one or two for but you see, I think it's important for me to say something. Yeah. In Zambia, it looks like we misunderstand robustness to bad language. You understand? I think we are cultured like that. No, no. We are cultured like that. Like you cannot we... just say certain words on an elderly person, you know, normally, culturally. Uh, you can't use certain words on an elderly person. Yes, uh, that's how come those who are sensitive uh, around those issues should become chiefs and not presidents. You, you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? So that you become a headman, uh, so that Twasika Gumunzi, but the moment you join politics, you have to have a thick skin because you, you are not going to determine how people are going to provide checks and balances and the language they will use. That is undemocratic. One of the reasons why in the constitution we enjoy freedom of expression. That freedom of expression is just freedom of expression. And if I feel the president or my president is lying in my own judgment to do justice on behalf of the Zambian people, I'll call him for what it is. If I believe what he's doing is primitive, I'll call it for what it is. Why? Is because there are younger people that are emerging who possibly one day will aspire to become president. If we don't condemn the wrongs that are being occasioned by those who are in office today, we're going to end up institutionalizing lying as part of politics. We're going to institutionalize propaganda as part of politics. We're going to institutionalize vengeance and victimization as part of politics. To condemn that, it has to be condemned in the clearest term and in specific terms. So I have a lot of respect for him as my elder brother. But what he has done, unfortunately, has just, in many ways, allowed him as an elder and as president to unclothe himself. Because when you start lying, even to your children as a father, the respect and reverence they have for you begins to win. The next time, uh, your son may just say, Even I'm there watching, I'm okay to wear by you understand. Oh, he has disrespect. But if you this, you did the by may find that maybe the father unclothed himself of the crown of glory because of either lies and lack of integrity. Mm. Respect is end, you don't demand for it. 